Is your HRV below 60 milliseconds? If so, it's not good. At least, you know, that's what you might think if you go online and look for what's a good HRV. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what a good HRV really means and what influences HRV and how to interpret your data, among many other things. So if you're if you have a low HRV, you know, depending on you know how you measure it, and are worried that it might be too low or it might have health implications, then stick with me. We're gonna talk about all of that, what it means and how to interpret the data so you can stop worrying. Now, the first thing that I wanna share is worrying about a low HRV is a sure way of suppressing your HRV even more because stress is arguably one of the most important factors that influences your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And that's what HRV really is all about. It's a reflection of how your nervous system is doing. The competition between your sympathetic and parasympathetic branch, if you're stressed, your HRV is low because you're in sympathetic overdrive and your parasympathetic nervous system or branch of the nervous system is suppressed. So stop worrying. That's really the first step before anything else. But let's talk about a couple of important factors to frame the discussion. Number one is HRV is a highly individual metric and that varies by age, by sex and by numerous other factors when you measure how you measure. And so just because you might have a low reading or several low readings in a row doesn't necessarily mean there is something wrong. But for reference, if, if we look at scientific databases and look at some of the numbers from wearables such as Whoop or the Aura Ring that track HRV, the average HRV for men across all age ranges is 65 and for women it's about 60 milliseconds. So that's why I said if it's below 60 then you know it, it's low. But again there is more nuance to that, more context to it. And then you know for comparison I'm 42 years old and I'm in excellent overall health and my cardiovascular fitness is top notch and my HRV hovers between 55 to 64 milliseconds. The other thing I should point out is I already indicated it that HRV appears to decline significantly with age and I'm going to show then on the side a couple of age brackets a split between men and women so you can roughly see what the average numbers appears to be in your age bracket you know because if you're older your HRV is naturally going to be lower than that of a maybe 20 year old you know so very difficult to compare. The other thing I should mention is the super high HRV readings, like a 300 milliseconds or higher, can actually be a sign of, heart con of a heart condition. So higher is not always better. And the other thing that's important to understand is that the HRV scale is a logarithmic scale. In other words, an HRV of 50 or an HRV of 100 milliseconds is only 15% better than an HRV of 50 milliseconds. That's not so 100 is not twice as high or twice as good as 50 it's only about 15 percent higher so that puts the whole you know the actual numbers uh, a little bit into context i want to say the other thing that's very important is that your hrv is constantly in flux it's constantly changing based on external factors based on what's going on inside of you stress levels you know recovery etc and so the best way and time to measure your hrv is when you're without external influence and deep sleep is arguably one of the best times to measure hrv which is why whoop and aura and many of the other sleep and recovery and fitness trackers measure your hrv during deep sleep because that's when you're disconnected for the most part from external influences if you just measure hrv while walking the dog it's likely not gonna be any you're not gonna get any useful information in fact just walking i've done those experiments suppresses hrv significantly when i walk and it doesn't even have to be a brisk walk. My HRV is like below 10 milliseconds. As soon as I sit down, sit down, it bounces back. So, you know, a lot of things to consider. I mean, there are a lot of things you can do to improve HRV. You have a separate video and a blog post on that, so I, I recommend you check that out. But one thing that's why HRV is so important is because it's an indirect indication of how your nervous system is doing. And that's why many people believe that low HRV means there is something wrong with them. They're maybe in poor health or, you know, poor conditioning or whatever the case might be. So let's talk, you know, briefly what is a normal range. And I'm going to show again those H brackets here on the side so you can tell what it is. But as you can see, if you're young, like in the 20 to 25 year old or H bracket, your HRV is probably significantly higher than someone who is in the 65 plus H bracket. HRV really declines with age. We don't fully understand yet why that is, but it is, it appears to be a fact, you know. Now, here are a couple of things that could lead to lower HRV readings. And those are really important factors that you should consider. Read them or understand them carefully, listen to them carefully, maybe check out the blog post and, and write them down or print them out and carefully think about all of those factors and see if they might be 
influencing your reading so you're not getting good data. Number one is the measuring method. You know, in order to get good HRV readings, you need a good heart rate monitor, you know, and ideally you want to do that at rest, as I said, you know, there are don't do it when you're when your heart rate is high, when you're stressed. Basically, try to do it during deep sleep. Try to use a device that can measure it during deep sleep. Or if you don't have that capability, do it first thing in the morning while you're completely calm. Maybe, you know, you, you sit up in bed, you're completely at, at peace, you're at resting heart rate for sure, and you measure your HRV and you do it at the same time every day. And then look at the trend. The trend is significantly more important than individual readings or absolute numbers. The second thing is, you know, how well are you managing stress? Because even though, even if you're maybe not stressed at the time of data capturing, or if you're not stressed before going to bed, but any stressors that you might have endured or exposed to, or that you might have been exposed to during the day, and that could be, you know, regular chronic stressors like, you know, financial bills or medical issues, parenting, kids, you know, trouble at work with your spouse, whatever, all of those stressors, you know, during the day can negatively impact your HRV at night if you measure during deep sleep because your body is trying to recover from those stressors. But those are not the only type of stressors. What most people don't realize is that exercise, cold plunging, sauna bathing, fasting, dietary changes, all of those things are also stressors that can then be reflected in a lower than normal HRV at night. So really think carefully of how, what your stress levels look like and how well you think you are managing those stressors. And if there are maybe things you can remove from your plate to reduce your overall stress burden and give your body a better chance to recover quicker, which would then lead to higher HRV readings at night. If you're stressed during the day, if you're over training, if you are completely worked up, then your body will need to spend a lot of resources and energy at night to recover. And that is then reflected in a low HRV. So that's very important. Speaking of overtraining, I know a lot of people who go to the gym every single day and, and push it to the limits because they think more is better, you know, to get fitter, to, you know, to, to, to compensate for the stressors of their life or at their work or whatever. But again, exercise is a stressor and overdoing it. And that's what I think what most people are doing, they're overtraining. And if you constantly overreach, you're going to be in a recovery deficit and your HRV will be uh, perpetually suppressed. So that's one thing that you should really take into account if you're physically active. Also, are you getting enough quality sleep? If you're not getting enough sleep, you don't allow your body enough time to recover again. And that can then, can then over time suppress your HRV. So make sure you get enough sleep. Are you physically active and fit? I mean, the opposite of overtraining is to be out of shape, you know, to be not fit at all. And if that's the case, then simple tasks like walking up the stairs or bringing the groceries to your car can suppress or can force your cardiovascular system to work harder, which will then lead to a lower or suppressed HRV because you are not recovered. Your body is constantly trying to recover from mundane stressors that shouldn't really be stressing your body. But if you're completely out of shape, those things will stress your body much like a workout does for someone who is fit. The other thing that's almost a no-brainer, but I'm going to mention it anyway, is alcohol consumption. Alcohol suppresses HRV, you know, and it, it might be as, as little as one glass of wine. I've done those experiments over and over again. One glass of wine, depending on my overall stress levels, can suppress my HRV, not only for one night, but for multiple times or for multiple nights in a row, potentially. And the impact of alcohol is even greater if my overall stress levels are more. If I'm on vacation, like we did, you know, not too long ago, went to Mallorca and it, everything was good. We were like in paradise and we had two glasses of wine at night. That didn't have a significant impact on my HRV because my overall stress levels were so low that my body had plenty of resources to recover from the alcohol. Uh, but if you add in regular stressors and then the alcohol as well, you're going to have a hit on your HRV, I guarantee you. Um, also, one thing that I think almost nobody thinks about is if you're on hormone replacement therapy or testosterone replacement therapy, maybe because you have low testosterone and you just want to boost it up a little bit to the upper range of normal levels, then know that the more testosterone you have, the lower your HRV could be and the higher your resting heart rate might be. I've experimented with testosterone replacement therapy two years ago. Well, I stopped a year ago with those experiments. 
But I've noticed during the time when my testosterone levels were the highest, my HRV was the lowest and my resting heart rate was also the highest. And when I stopped cold turkey and my testosterone levels plummeted for a while until my body picked up, you know, its own production again, during my lowest levels of testosterone, my HRV was the highest and my resting heart rate dropped to the high 30s, where normally it's between 45 to 55, depending on how recovered I am. So that's also something that if you're on TRT or some other, you know, steroids or whatever, you might have a lower HRV. Now, does that make you less healthy? I don't know. I guess it depends on how high your testosterone levels are. There is something as, you know, having too much and too high levels. Um, but if you are the upper up to optimal range and that causes your HRV to be slightly lower, I wouldn't probably worry about that. High blood pressure is also something that can influence your HRV. Um, studies have shown that, you know, if your heart has to work harder to get the blood pumped through your blood vessels, that stressor can actually lower your HRV. Are you hydrating enough? That's also a factor that many people don't take into consideration. If the heart has to pump harder, it's a stressor for the heart. If your blood viscosity basically goes up, if it's too thick, you know, so hydrate well. And if you take all of those factors into account and, and you say, you know what, I'm fine with all of this. There's nothing that I see that could be causing my lower than normal readings. Let's say you're you know, maybe in your in your 30 milliseconds or sometimes even lower, depending on how old you are and if you're male or female, then I would argue maybe there is nothing you can do about it and there is certainly nothing to worry about it. You know, if you feel good, if you feel healthy, if you're fit, if you sleep well, if if everything is appears to be good, but just your HRV is low and you are certain that the measurement method and time is not the culprit, then don't worry about it. Worrying about it is a sure way to suppress it even more. You know, my wife is younger than I am. She should technically have a higher HRV than I have, but she doesn't. But in her case, I think, or I feel like it's because your cardiovascular fitness, your cardiorespiratory fitness is not quite where mine is. So maybe that's why mine, my HRV is slightly higher, or it might just be genetic and there is nothing you can do about it. If you're super low HRV readings, like in the five to 15 milliseconds every day, and there does not appear to be a a change in trend, you know, maybe get an ECG or an AKG and see if there is, could potentially be something wrong with your heart. It might not be, but it's certainly worth checking out. Now, if you want to know what you can do, what lifestyle factors you can implement to improve your HRV potentially, you know, besides the factors I already mentioned, I have a dedicated video and blog post that I encourage you to check out that show you all the things that I've done to improve my HRV. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. Let me know what your HRV is. Is it high? Is it low? Is it where you think it should be? Or is And what have you done to maybe improve it? You know, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear. And I'll, t I'll see you in the next video.